Hello, my name is Philip, and I'm going to talk about improving generated text in games. And I'm talking about it because this is something I have been working on in my spare time for years now. And also because this weekend is the roguelike celebration and it's, you know, roguelikes are often about generated text or at least have some something in it. And roguelike celebration is great. I, I was at the the one last year and I hope to attend this year virtually so um, yeah but anyway even if you're not into roguelikes or if you're not into roguelike celebration I hope that this will bring you some interesting things to think about at least all right so what do I mean by text in games well games are full of text especially roguelikes it's things like grass like fungus crunches underfoot, uh, one of my favorites, or the more traditional, the goblin takes two points of damage. And all right, so, so that's text in games. And what I mean by improving is making it sound more natural or human. Uh, so, would, so example, <laughs> uh, the goblin takes one points of damage. So this is something that we still see a bit in in games and uh, so the so I, I can imagine that you're thinking oh he, he means Philip means something like improvement into the goblin takes one point of damage but that's not what I mean I I mean a few levels beyond that into something like the tip of the sword cuts above the goblin's belly and he staggers back surprised this is even mechanically, this is different, right? It's not just uh, removing someone's hit points. So it's not just about improving some kind of text generation routine or interpolation or something, but it's similar to, you know, if you compare a bad dungeon master in Dungeon and Dragons or Dungeon World like me, who th they will often say something like the goblin takes one point of damage but the really great dungeon masters can generate text they can say things like tip of the sword cuts above the goblin's belly and he staggers back surprised you know so that's what i mean another example this is Dwarf Fortress legend mode so in 118 the dwarf muffle arrow riddle confronted confronted law I can also maybe sometime learn to read and and talking speak English but so and then later in that same list of events you have in 118 law was struck down by the dwarf muffle arrow riddle and all I'm saying is you could if you had a better text generation capabilities you could do um, the dwarf muffle arrow riddle confronted law and after a bitter fight he struck him down right so that sounds more natural and again it doesn't need to be that right like sometimes this is better than this to be honest uh but sometimes it doesn't so i'm just gonna show you a demo so i have my phone here and i'm building in my spare time a game that is on mobile and where do I have it here? Higher. Um, and it's it looks very much like um, like a. It's designed to look like sorry, uh, it, it phased out. Uh, it, it's designed to look like a game book, right? So it, it's very much like just text and paragraphs of text. But the idea there is that it's in in its core, it's actually pretty simulation heavy. So I'm simulating to the to the level of individual body parts, and and I'm hearing sounds from outside, and I'm not sure if it's in the in uh, it ends up in the recording, hopefully not. So it's. Yeah, it's it, it simulates individual body parts and and then it kind of strings things that happen in the game world together into prose, right? So here we're 
this is why it's kind of roguelike. We're fighting a goblin with the help of Tamara, our friend, and uh, I've you know she, Tamara fainted a slash, and uh, the goblin exposed his arm, and we can do things. There's a debug option that obviously we're not gonna take, but there are things like step his eye right and then we can see if that happens or not there's some randomness involved and you know classic rpg stuff and i thrusted the goblin's left eye he tries to dodge but but doesn't succeed the dagger cuts into his left eye and he yells in pain tamara swings at his right leg he tries to deflect it but is out of balance she slashes his right shin the right leg goes slim he collapses and he yells in pain and then we could do more things. Um, that's where I'll end the demo. But hopefully this, right? This is all generated. This, this is something that happened in the game world and we were able to read about it, not as, a, as bullet points, but as something hopefully more readable. All right, so that's the demo. So why would you want to improve text in games? One very simple answer is just it's imp it's improving your game a little bit. It's similar to improving your graphics, right? If you do have something about your game that needs to be expressed in prose like what I showed you just now, then then it's better if you have it nicer, right? Uh, like with graphics, it they don't matter, but if you have a game with nicer graphics that can show things in a more pleasing way, then people like that, right? I should also say, I should have said it at, at the start. So, okay, it improves games, but it doesn't need to, right? If If, if you, in many games, you don't actually need to improve the generated text. In fact, for especially for many of the roguelikes that I see, you actually don't want to even. The reason is that the centerpiece of a roguelike is the map. The centerpiece is a map or the kind of the table of of the of the stats. But, so, the text is really just a log that people can scan through and they're fine if it says Goblin takes one point of damage, it's, 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 it's all right. Uh, but for games like mine, where the focus is on the actual text, uh, and maybe even for things like Dwarf Fortress, where it's at least one part of the experience is about like really reading about some things that happened in the past, then uh, I think that could could help, right? So it it improves the experience. The the another reason that I think is even more important is that it unlocks new genres. Um, I think I'm pretty sure that my game, that this one, could not even exist without a better natural language generation. Imagine that 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 paragraph that I showed you, if it was just a list of things that happened, and if it was only like, you know, Goblin takes one point of damage and I, I you know, take one person of damage, that, that would just not work. So it actually unlocks genres or at least mechanics that you can add to your games, because now you can express things in your game world that you couldn't before. Um, or you could, you can always express things in your mechanics, but some things are really hard to express in in either lists of texts that are, is just you know re repeated uh, or even in graphics so yeah it unlocks new things and lastly and this is more of a like a fluffy thing but i think i'm really glad that some games can strive for being more how do you call it I mean, ma mature, I guess, or, you know, have have more interesting topics than just bashing goblins. And 
I also think that it's sometimes kind of clashing with the the capabilities that the games have and one of them is text so if you if you have something really deep and and the theme is really important to me it's it's not great if if right next to it you have something like goblin takes one point of damage you know so i still i still love games that do that i still love roguelikes and will play them but and sometimes that kind of discrepancy between the theme and the the presentation in text can be powerful but sometimes you just want to have both of those things in on the on a similar level all right types of text and games this is important because this this kind of hopefully will make some things clear so one of them is authored text that means basically things like the intro to most games is author text. Someone actually wrote that and put it in the game. Now, even that can be a little bit generated or a little bit procedural in that it, you can add, let's say the player's name into the intro text, right? So welcome Philip into this you know, crazy world but mostly it's authored uh, you know if it's like 99 percent of it is is written by some human then it's not generated text in my mind it's authored text and the only way to improve author text is to become a better writer or like hire one so and i'm not a, i'm i'm not one to be able to give you any input on that because i'm a terrible writer so the next one is UI text and by UI text I don't just mean buttons I also mean things like like the goblin takes one point of damage for example in a roguelike if if you were playing a roguelike and you see goblin takes one point of damage you read it first you read it the second time by the 50th time or the 100th time you see it as a shape you, it's it's part of the UI now it's text, but you don't read it anymore. You just see the shape of the, you know, the goblin takes X amount of damage, and all you see is goblin and the damage, right? And even after that, sometimes it's more like, oh, is it, you don't even see the the number, you just see if it's a big number or a small number or a medium number, right? So, so it, it really, it's like a visual effect in a graphical game, and I've made this mistake, do not try to make this more human because UI text is a graphical ex expression of what's going on in the game. If you try to make it more interesting to read, people will just get frustrated. People, for mo mo most of this kind of text, they just want to, to blink in that direction and see what's happening. They don't want to be like, oh, oh, so now it's it's not the goblin takes 12 points of damage. It's 12 points of damage have been re removed from the goblin's pool of hit points. You know, that's not gonna do well. So, yeah, don't do that. So don't, don't try to improve generated text. Try to be very, very consistent with UI text. And then there is generated text, and generated text, this is what I mean by this, and what I mean by, uh, for example, Legends mode in, in War Fortress, or many other things. Um, well, the, the more like long form text that you can read in games that is generated, though. All right. Many people, when they hear me talk about gen language and text generation, they assume that I'm using something like GPT-2 or GPT-3 or any kind of neural network machine learning thing. And I just want to be clear, I'm not. So I, I think these are great tools and great pieces of technology, but they are not for me and for, I think for most games. Um, 
I, I know there are there's like AI dungeon. I know about it. A lot of people will be like, hey, do you know? Yes, I know, and I think it's it's great that they what they're doing, but it's not what mo most games are about. Most games are about having a consistent world, and then from that world you are rendering either to text or or to two D or three D, right? What GPT and other machine learning libraries do is that you can give them some nudges in some direction in forms of preceding or text or something like this, but but you can't tell them about the world. The, the neural network is trained on other things. It, it's trained on the level of language. It's very confusing because it's so good that because it reads so much of human text, it can kind of infer things to in a way that also almost makes it look like it's it understands the world, right? So cue any video about AI dungeon or about GPT-2 where someone is like asking the, 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 the neural network um, about something and it actually replies in a coherent way or it or it writes an article and it's the article actually makes sense you know so that it can do but it's always on the level of the language and it will always kind of bend over backwards to make things work in the language example imagine that the player goes to the trader in the town and kills him and then the the player like says i want to buy something from the trader obviously from the game world perspective if you doing it in the game world uh, and uh, then you just it's not possible right because the, the trader you just killed the trader is he's dead but if you try to do this in GPT-2 or GPT-3, I'm pretty sure it will happen because GPT-2 or GPT-3 will say something like, uh, you know, it will resurrect him or it will like create a copy or something. It will uh, figure out a way to narratively go from killed a trader to bought something from him um, because it doesn't care about an underlying world. It cares about narrative and it's trained from narratives so yes so ml is not the way right now i know that there are some projects that try to kind of inject the world into the ai but it's really really not there yet i'm sorry um I'm, it's really not there yet and maybe it will in you know a few months maybe in a few years but right now it's it's not and as i said i've been working on this for years so uh, i can't really wait all right so that means that we need to go to a more traditional nlg and natural language generation and so i have this for example these are like uh this, this is a book for from year zero or something it's it's pretty these things are pretty old because most of the books today are about um, NLG. I have one that is better than this, I think, or uh, that, that I found much more useful and it's it's green and it has basically, I think it just says natural language generation, but I can't find it now, so. But anyway, so natural language generation, it's things like we have data from the weather forecast and it's just numbers um about like wind and and temperatures and stuff like this and we want to be able to generate re forecasts like reports for people to read uh imagine like places like canada where you have people that live in a place that has its own weather but it's just like 10 people live there and then another place that is a different weather is the closest one to it. So you, you, you want to be able to, to tell people what they should expect without them having to read through like tables, um, right? So, um, and that's one of the things that, that is I think in the other book where, where so 
So looking at just weather reporting and and how would we how would we do that? How would we translate these numbers into into useful English? I've 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 done this before, by the way. So I I did one of my projects that is still out there is a weather reporter that is for like the normal populace, but it's in Czech. So I'm not going to uh, talk about it now. But traditional natural language generation is is really a lot more complicated than than what you need as a game developer. So I just wanted to make that clear. This looks scary, but but you don't need much of it. And the reason is that in natural language generation, you have that, let's say, the forecast data. And at some point, you have to find out what's the most salient parts. You have to find the patterns, you know, like, oh, like it's going to be raining in the morning and in the night. Um, you know that that's a pattern that you have to find in the data and then you know put it together um, you have to do things like oh like if there's a hurricane coming in at noon you probably don't want to start chronologically right you don't want to be like oh in the morning is going to be a little breeze and then there's going to be a little rain and then like a, a hurricane comes and everyone dies you you want to be like hey a hurricane comes and everyone dies uh, unless you evacuate and then you don't really need to talk about some breeze uh, in the morning so so there's a lot more in, involved of like involvement of finding out what to say and in what direction games NLG so things that I've been looking at so far is a much easier domain the reason is that first you are kind of in the you are building the the game world you are building the data and so as things as things happen you can actually also tr start building the natural language kind of flow also most games are chronologically sorted so they, they, they are experienced in some chronology so it it is very rare that the player will need to that, that you in your natural language generation will need to switch things around like with a hurricane you don't need to you just say um just say things as they happen right uh so that that makes things things easier and yeah it makes things easier so e game book e game book is the thing that i've, sh I've showed you um this is actually the, the the game itself is called Knights of San Francisco, like with a K, Knights. Um, but the but the underlying, I guess, a game engine is called e -game book because it looks like a game book, but it's you know more than that. And I just want to go through very quickly the NLG design. I'm not going to go into too much. Detail. Anyway, storyline is the main kind of object of of the natural language generation in this game, and it 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 basically tracks the whole storyline from one decision point to the next, and so it's many many things in it. You know, so for example, this this paragraph is one storyline, right? Um, so it's the whole narrative between two points and storyline the object in the game is used by actions so uh the action can say storyline at and then a report i'll go talk through what the report is and then at the end it realizes this into a like a flowing text a paragraph two paragraphs whatever the report is something that's that always contains a string which is already a language so this is how it's different from traditional natural language generation so in this case it's subject cuts above object and then the report can have many many other things but here it just has subject which is the sort or a sort it's an entity and the object and again it's an entity belly right and this all 
mm, realizes into the sword cuts above the goblin's belly. Now you see that, for example, like first of all, this is a very simple storyline. The storyline is just one report, so it just creates one sentence, and then it basically substitutes the subject with the sword, and then it substitutes the object with belly. But then it sees, oh, okay, so just if we just have a, the sword cuts above the belly that really doesn't seem natural right because there can be many bellies which belly so it pulls in the goblin into the into the report now the next report could is something like subject staggers back and again the subject is now goblin so um and then if we have the first and the this one report together the storyline is smart enough to say the sword cuts above the goblin's belly and he staggers back and the the i i will say that there is the he right because we know that there is nothing else in this storyline that could be referring to he so we can say that about the goblin right so because if there was if there was another person male person then then we can't use he at this at this stage and then the other thing i want to point out is that it it puts the sentences together because it makes sense and again it sounds more natural entities again have many many different properties but the most important ones are things like belly uh i mean <laughs> the name and the pronoun um uh, but also things like the owner right so as i said before Sometimes it, you need to pull in the owner to, to be able to uh, to disambiguate the, the different entities. And then it, for example, has a team. So sometimes you have a report about someone doing something that is good for them. So like I... Um, okay, I hit the goblin over his head with my sword and then the next sentence can be the goblin helmets stops the sword and so the first sentence is positive for me and my team the second sentence is positive for the helmet and its team um, and so if these two sentences are next to each other there will be but so I hit the goblin over his head but his helmet stops it all right and the algorithm is and again it's pretty involved i will share the source code link later but uh, it's based on mat pattern matching so imagine the storyline and like 25 reports in the storyline it will see if there are places in the like if there are reports or more often pairs or triplets of reports where you can somehow combine them together into a more human sounding sentence so so that that pattern matches the different things uh, then it also needs to track identifiers so it it needs to know okay so there's uh, there's two goblins so I can't say just goblin I need to use their adjective so it's like Okay, one goblin is the the white goblin, and the the other one is the red goblin. Uh, so I can now I need to say the red one and the the, the white one. <clears throat> uh, and maybe there's only one person who's female in this storyline, so I can say she pretty pretty safely, right? Uh, then there's joiners. That's basically how do you put together two sentences so it flows well with and and but and stuff like this. And then one thing that I learned after a long time of, of playing with this is the the algorithm needs to be iterative. So you, you can't just plan it once and then you're done, right? Uh, as an example, again, with the goblin's belly, you start with just the the sword cuts above, just above the goblin's, the, the belly, right? Then the algorithm realizes, okay, so maybe we should add the... The goblin because otherwise it doesn't really make sense so you have the 
the sword cuts just above the goblin's belly. But now imagine that if this is part of a longer storyline and there are two goblins here. So which goblin, right? So now you have to... You didn't know at first that you have the other goblin mentioned, um, the, the, the one with the belly. Um, so at first you thought, okay, so I can just talk about goblin. The, the other one is like, a, I don't know, like a goblin shaman or something. Um, so now you have to go back again to the beginning and say, okay, so we have two goblins now here. So one of them we need to, we, both of them we need to specify which one. So now it's going to be the sword cuts back above the goblin captain's belly. And then later some some sentence that only said something about a goblin will now be a shaman goblin because it needs to dis disambiguate. So anyway, so it's it's iterative and it can it can run uh, many times before actually stabilizing onto something that is disambiguous and actually makes sense. All right, um, I have lots of tests. I really, if you're trying to implement something like this, I really, really recommend writing tests, um, even if you don't normally do that, because natural language is a mess and everything somehow is related to, to something else. So yeah, you should, you should definitely do that. Um, oh yeah, I, I was gonna say, I was going to show a piece of code that kind of calls the storyline so that you know how it it looks like in practice. Um, so instead of just having storyline.add, I most often use the entity.report. So in this case, there's a severed part, some, someone severed a part of someone else. And the severed part kind of reports what it happened what happened to it, to the storyline. So S is the storyline. And then there is the text. So subject falls to the ground. So, you know, the hand falls to the ground. Um, but it could be the teeth fall to the ground. So that, that's why we have the S here, is that according to what's going on, if, if what who we're talking about, it could be removed. And there are other things like that uh, and then there's the negative is true so this is when i was talking about the team it, it's it's that every report can be either positive or negative for the subject and in this case it's pretty negative for the the severed part and everyone in that same team so um yeah um and oh and then there are many other things but action threats are a way to express that some things can be collapsed into one report. Um, so if I say I slash at someone's head and the, the hand then falls to the ground, that's an action threat. It's something that can be collapsed into I cut off the other person's hand, right? Uh, but we can't just do that because there could be something in between. So it could be like I slash at the goblin's hand, he tries to deflect it or he he puts something into it, or something, so something else happens and then his hand falls to the ground. And so, yeah, so that that's action threats. And again, there there's many other things, little things like this that's why I'm providing a link to the the source of the project. So it's on github.com slash philip h slash ingamebook. I will also, it's probably better if I just link in the description of the video, I will link to the actual natural language generation generation part of the of the whole deal. And I want to say I don't expect anyone to actually like run the code in a game book because unless you really want to do a very similar thing to to what i'm doing um but i th i think i hope it's going to be an inspiration for someone and it's always better or sometimes better to read the actual code and see what's, what's happening than to just uh, you know 
listen to someone explain it in, on video. So, well, thank you for, for your attention. I hope that this has been interesting and, and that some of you may be thinking, oh, well, I'm, I, may, I may use some of this in my, in my work. And yeah, uh, please, if you are interested in the project itself and in this, in this thing, then uh, go to gamebook.com and I spend some time explaining what the different reasons why I'm building it and the, why I'm building it the way it is. And also there's a, a newsletter that I'm writing. I don't have a devlog, but I have newsletters. So if you subscribe to that, then uh, you will get more information from me. Uh, thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the, you know, the, the roguelike celebration or anything else that you're you're doing this weekend.